This is the i5-6600 processor. The actual CPU it looks like this. It fits into a socket 1151, typically with a Z170 chipset. Basically, this is your highest non-K and i5 processor. It, um, its base frequency is 3.3 GHz and it can turbo up to 3.9. This is uh, um, Easy Gamer's recommendation for a medium budget gaming PC. If you're not looking to do some serious overclocking or building a beast of a computer and just want to be able to, to play most games, this is an excellent place to start. Basically, what it what it is is it's a 65 watt TDP processor. Now, to explain what TDP is, is that's basically how Intel um, determines the power consumption and therefore the actual amount of performance you can get from the CPU. Now, this can be very confusing because a lot of people um, look at processors to and say, okay, it's an i5 or it's an i7. In reality, that's really a very small factor on the performance. To put it in perspective for you, um, the power, the amount of processing power to the amount of energy stays relatively consistent in the same generation. But where this 6600 is an i5, you can get an i7-6600U, which is used the typical i7 you'd find in a laptop, and that's only a 15 watt processor compared to this 165. So you have a lot less actual processing power. Then if you take it a step up, you can get a 6700HQ, which is also a laptop processor, but a 45 watt processor, which is, if you look at it just quickly in the store, they'll both just have an i7 sticker on, but the reality is the one is three times the performance of the next one. Um, if you want to take a step up from this, the 6700K is a 91 watt processor, which is a nice big leap, and then you, the next step up, which we can explain in a bit, bit of a different video, is the 140 watt processors. And they fall into a completely different socket. They have quad channel RAM instead of the dual channel, which you would find on this or the lower processors. And, um, but it's a much, much more expensive build. But you do get more performance with them. So, back to this one. Typical actual performance, uh, actual power consumption is at idle. You're looking at 3.8 watt. Um, during gaming, measured, measured um, gaming usage is about 52 watt, so it doesn't actually draw that much power, but it's definitely significantly more than what you would get from a laptop processor, hence the reason for actually going the desktop route. But this is a 14 nanometer processor still, which is the technology used for the manufacturing, which means it's incredibly power efficient. So even though you're looking at factor more than a factor four of a typical laptop i7 your cpu cooler which you would get with it is actually quite a small little cooler and in our experience it's actually sufficient if you're not going into overclocking if you want to go a step up to the 6700k then you can look at a better cooler because they the as you overclock you um, start to lose efficiency and generate more heat the processor comes with uh, Fairly impressive onboard graphics. It's the HD Gaming uh, 530. Um, if you're looking just for a good place to start and don't want to buy graphics cards immediately, it's an excellent, excellent option. You can play most games at D1080, but unfortunately with all the settings set to low. But it's we've tested it. It's fairly, fairly playable. You can uh, look look elsewhere in the section. You'd find a video on what it's actually like to use the 530 for, for gaming on an HD screen. Um, basically, if you're looking in terms of where would you place this, this CPU, and uh, overall CPU benchmarks, this is normally in the 83rd percentile, which means it's quite good. But if you're looking just at quad-core benchmarks, this is actually in the 96th percentile, which means there's very few processors very few quarter core processors that are actually um, quicker than this. So it's a great value for money processor. The difference between this and the i7, the, the 6700, is basically hyperthreading and the slight clock speed, but very little. Um, and what hyperthreading is, is a, lo a lot of people has the misconception that it's actually extra cores. It's not. This is a, a quad core processor, 
whereas the i7 one is a quad core with hyperthreading. So Windows sees it as eight processing cores, but all it actually is is each, each processing core has two feeds into it. And for certain tasks, such as video encoding, you, you gain a little bit out of that. But for gaming, there's virtually no difference. So there's not really extra value um, to go for the hyperthreading versus not hyperthreading if you're, if you're targeting gaming. Um, basically, summary of this processor, good value, great performance when you compare it to something like the laptop i7s, and overall, until you're looking at 4K gaming, probably more than more than you'd need in terms of processing power.